El síndrome de Guillain-Barré está afectando al mundo. Al año se diagnostican 100.000 casos nuevos, ya que son muchas las infecciones que lo pueden desarrollar, no solamente el Zika. Infecciones como la neumonía, enteritis, hepatitis e influenza, infecciones respiratorias pueden ser la causa del síndrome de Guillain-Barré. Una enfermedad que se caracteriza por debilidad puede tener síntomas sensitivos y esa debilidad puede progresar hasta comprometer los músculos respiratorios. Pero el Zika es la nueva causa. It's quite a difficult thing to really understand, but Guillain-Barré syndrome is an autoimmune disease like multiple sclerosis or thyroid disease or lupus. There's a lot of autoimmune diseases, multiple sclerosis as well, in which the immune system in the body attacks the nervous system. And for some reason, Zika virus, which is the new cause of Guillain-Barré syndrome and what this conference is about, For some reason, when certain people are infected by Zika virus, they make an immune response against the virus, which is normal, but this immune response then attacks the nerve by mistake. This is an error in immune programming in the body. It doesn't occur with everybody who's infected with Zika virus. Maybe one person in every few thousand who's affected by Zika will go on to develop Guillain-Barré syndrome and this is what we're investigating. Pero aún la ciencia no descifra el por qué algunas personas infectadas con Zika desarrollan el Guillain-Barré. You asked the million dollar question. If we knew the answer to that then we would have made an enormous amount of progress. What we first need to do is to really understand what it is about the immune response to the Zika infection in these people who get Guillain-Barré is different from people who have the infection without developing Guillain-Barré. And this question you ask is the heart of the problem, the scientific problem. Lo que sí se sabe es que aunque el porcentaje es pequeño, el síndrome de Guillain-Barré puede ser fatal. Pero con una detección a tiempo y un manejo médico adecuado como la terapia de inmunoglobulina se puede estabilizar al paciente.